welcome back to our last session of Relationship Goals God's Way. Uh, what a great series we've had over the last uh, few weeks. Uh, we have been looking at six keys to great relationships God's way is found in Scripture. And today is the last one. And here's the last thought. We are better together whether we're married or single. And as we've said all the way through this series, uh, uh, Relationship Goals God's Way has not been about uh, if you're married or if you're single. It's about both. God created us for relationships. And so today uh, we're going to look at Matthew chapter 19 where Jesus gets asked a question that tests him. And, uh, uh, it, it's really a, a tough question for us today as well. Um, why divorce? Uh, what's so important about uh, uh, staying married? And then Jesus answers the question, what is the beauty of singleness? I love these words. Uh, Peter Hubert said one time, he said, single Christians living in purity and community are billboards for the sufficiency of Christ. I love those words, and, and it's far too often, I think, um, we can sometimes, if you happen to be single here, uh, far too often we can think, I'm not as important, or I'm not all that God wants me to be. And I want you to know that's absolutely not the case. I've said it over and over in this series. If you are a single believer, you are a billboard. If you live in purity and community, for the sufficiency of Christ, and there's nothing better than that. And so Jesus is asked a question in Matthew chapter 19, and, and the question is, is a question that tests him. Uh, the Pharisees uh, came to Jesus often, and they would ask him a question not because they wanted to know the answer, but because they wanted to get, catch Jesus or they wanted to get him in a trap. And my guess is you might have people like that as well that uh, they'll come up. It's like they spend uh, all weekend or all night uh, pondering questions they can ask you that will trip you up. And uh, that's exactly what the Pharisees constantly did with Jesus. In Matthew chapter 19, uh, beginning in verse 3, it says, Some of the Pharisees came to Jesus testing him with this question. He said, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any reason at all? Now, now let's get the question again. They said, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any reason at all? Now, to go back and paint a little historical context, uh, in those days, the Pharisees were the religious leaders of the day. And there were two famous Pharisees. One was named Hillel and one was Shammai. Now let me tell you the difference in their thoughts on divorce. Hillel would be considered the liberal. He really believed that uh, a man could divorce his wife for any reason at all. As soon as she no longer pleased him, he could put her away and divorce her. The other guy was much more uh, conservative, let's put it that way. He was uh, uh, much more rigid in his thought. He said, yes, a man can divorce his wife, but only for reasons of unfaithfulness, only when she's unfaithful. And so the Pharisees had a tendency to either line up in the, as soon as she no longer pleases you, get rid of her, or in the side only in marital unfaithfulness, get rid of her. Now, let me just tell you, even in Shammai's more conservative perspective, he took the idea of marital unfaithfulness a little further. He said, if your wife is unfaithful, you have to divorce her. And not only do you divorce her, but you divorce her and make a public, public spectacle of her. Uh, you uh, humiliate her. And so um, Jesus has asked the question. They said, which side do you choose, Jesus? And Jesus gives an interesting response. Notice what he says. He says this. He says in Matthew chapter 19, verse 46, And Jesus answered them, said, Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning, talking about God, made them both male and female? For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. And then he says these words. He says, What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. And so here Jesus in, uh, in Matthew 19, in answer to their question, basically gives us the three D's of marriage. The three D's of marriage. And in these first few verses, He gives us the definition of marriage. And what was Jesus' definition of marriage? In answer to their question, He said, Listen, 
let's don't look at this from man's perspective. Let's start by looking at marriage from God's perspective. God defined marriage. Well, how did God define marriage? Jesus said, well, first of all, marriage is between a man and a woman. That's the way God created it. One man, one woman. Then it said that man and that woman would leave their father and mother and cleave to each other and become one flesh. That word leave means to sever ties. In other words, uh, if we're a mom and dad and uh, that day our, our son walks the aisle or our daughter walks the aisle, we can't hold on to them. We can't have reins holding on to them. We've got to let them leave us. But then as they leave us, they cleave to each other. The man and the woman cleave to each other. They become their own couple, their, uh, their new household. That's who they are. And then it says they become one flesh. And Jesus is acknowledging from the very beginning of time, intimacy in marriage, physical intimacy in marriage was God's created order. He wanted it that way. He desires it. There's nothing wrong with that. And so Jesus defines it. But look at, the, look at these words again. He says, What therefore God has joined together, God's definition of marriage, let no man separate. You may have never seen that before, but Jesus, when He gives those last four words, let no man separate, Jesus was responding to the Pharisees' question. The Pharisees' question was, do you believe that Hillel has the right definition of divorce, or do you believe Shammai has the right definition of divorce, the liberal or the conservative? Jesus said, listen, marriage is God's thing. And there is never a time that we should allow a man or a woman to tell us when to end a marriage. If God designed marriage, God is the only one that can tell us when marriage should be ended. So God's definition, uh, Jesus said the definition of marriage is a man and a woman, leave father and mother, cleave to each other, become one flesh, intimacy is a part of who they are. But Jesus goes on a little further down. He does acknowledge the diversion of marriage. Uh, there is a diversion. We call it divorce in our day, and Jesus acknowledges it even in their day. Here's what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 19. He said, they said to him, Why then did Moses allow us to give our wives, or why did he allow them to give a wife a certificate of divorce and send her away? And Jesus responded, Because the hardness of your heart, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives. Then he goes back to God's creation. But from the beginning of time, it was not meant to be this way, he says. And I say to you, Jesus adds a parameter, whoever divorces his wife, except for the case of immorality, and marries another woman, commits adultery. So right here in this passage, Jesus says a mouthful. Um, he acknowledges that divorce, it's a part of sinful world. Um, when sinful people um, marry other sinful people and we stop following God's design, divorce does happen. And you may have been through that on your own. Now in this, Jesus said divorce comes because we have hard hearts that we're no longer willing to look at God's design for marriage, but instead we start looking to our own self and our own happiness and our own desires. Now in Jesus' answer, He says, If you divorce a woman apart from a reason for immorality and you marry someone else, you commit adultery. So Jesus acknowledged uh, that adultery was in fact a reason to get a divorce. But here's where Jesus very clearly differentiated himself from the conservative uh, Pharisee. Jesus said, although it may be permissive to get a divorce after adultery has taken place or after unfaithfulness has taken place, Jesus said it's not mandatory. God's ultimate design, any time we sin and harm a relationship, his ultimate design is that there would be genuine repentance, forgiveness, and renewal. That's why Jesus said, let no man separate marriage. In other words, if you're going to ponder a divorce, don't let someone else make that choice. 
Don't listen to a counselor. Don't listen to somebody on TV. Don't listen to anybody else. If you were pondering a divorce, you better have direct communication with God. And that's why Jesus said, let no man separate you whatsoever. So Jesus said the definition of marriage, one man, one woman for life. There is, in fact, Jesus said, a diversion. There is divorce. That's never God's design. But in a sinful world, sometimes divorce takes place. But Jesus doesn't stop there. So now that He's talked about uh, divorce and marriage, He also talks about the beauty and the dedication of singleness. Here's what He says. Listen to these words clearly and uh, listen to, uh, to perhaps where you might be or someone you know might be in this situation. Then the disciples ask Him a question. So Jesus hears, this, uh, uh, hears the question. He answers the question. And the disciples say, Lord, this is tough for us to deal with. If we don't know whether we should divorce or not divorce, is it better for us not to get married at all? And Jesus said, no, not at all. And here's what Jesus said. Jesus said, not all men can stay unmarried. And then He says, some were born as eunuchs. Then He said, some were made eunuchs by other men. Then He said, some have chosen to live as eunuchs for the kingdom of God. So Jesus gives us three categories of single people. Ones who were born that way. All right, there are in fact some, and some have just said, uh, some people have said, well, this refers to those that are, were born with a genetic difficulty. That may be a little bit of it, but the truth is some people are not born uh, with the urge for intimacy. It's just not who they are. That doesn't make them lesser than anybody. It's just not who they are. And Jesus essentially says, if that's you, serve God. He also says a, uh, there's a second category of single person. In those days, he said, there were eunuchs who were made eunuchs by other people. In other words, someone took them and made them eunuchs for either punishment or to serve in the king's harem or in the king's court. Uh, he would take men, uh, able-bodied men, he would make them eunuchs, and he would force them to serve and labor for him. Now, that means someone else made them a eunuch. They weren't born that way. How do you take that and apply that to us today? Well, if you've been through a divorce and it wasn't your choice, in essence, someone else has made you a eunuch. And so what do you do? Jesus says, man, love God, serve Him, do something great for the kingdom of God. And then the third thing that Jesus said is He said, there are some who have the urge for intimacy but have chosen not to fulfill this for the sake of the kingdom. In other words, they have put that aside so they can serve God. So those are the three D's. Let me go over them quickly. The definition of marriage. God designed it, male and female, for life. Sin, the second D, there is a diversion. It's called divorce. Sometimes because of sin in our relationship, divorce takes place. Here's the reality. God never wants it, but sometimes it happens. Here's the third thing. There is also a dedication in being single. If you've never been married, don't feel like you have to be married to serve God. Jesus said, serve Him gladly. Beyond that, if someone has divorced you or you're divorced, don't feel like you have to rush down the aisle. If you are divorced and you have a sense of condemnation, I want to just encourage you today, let that go. The Bible says there is now therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Don't ever feel guilt. Don't ever feel shame. Feel God's grace and forgiveness in your life. And then finally, he said, some have chosen as singles to stay single the rest of their life so they can be used for God. And let me tell you what, Jesus said, that's an amazing thing. I love what the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. He said, some have chosen to be single and they need to stay that way. And in doing so, Paul says they can have a greater impact for the kingdom of God than someone who's married. So whether you're married or whether you're single, strongly consider staying that way, but always knowing you were created to serve God and His kingdom. Take care. God bless.